if you just watched me take apart an IKEA fix-it drill, this is the video where I put it back together. Basically, in taking apart the fixa, I found that I was quite surprised at the quality of the gearbox in there. Uh, it was a lot more than I was expecting in the drill at this price point. However, it's overall still pretty limited by the integral battery pack, so I wanted to do something about that. So unlike the Black & Decker rebuild video where that was essentially a rebuild or restoration, uh, in this video I'm actually going to be trying to modify the drill to make it a little bit more useful. So the first step is to get everything back together and in order, and then we can begin to look at how to actually make those batteries external rather than internal. And this is, yeah, partly so that there's less downtime, you don't have to charge it and wait for it while it's charging, you can just charge the batteries on their own. And this will hopefully help with end of life, if you remember from the user manual, hopefully it means that it no longer has to be thrown out when the batteries are done, but the batteries can simply be replaced with new cells instead. So I hopped into Rhino 3D to do some 3D modeling, uh, trying to, in some instances, match the geometry of the drill based off some photos. Uh, for this type of work, uh, something like Fusion 360 or another parametric software would probably be a better fit. I'm just using Rhino because that's what I'm most familiar with. And then once those are done, I exported them into a slicer to get them ready for 3D printing. Then they printed for about three and a half hours, three hours and 45 minutes or so, and I had some parts ready to go. Back on the bench, we can just make sure that everything fits well. Uh, basically, there's the main body, there's the two end caps, and then there's a little spacer to fill out the back end of the one cap. This is where I kind of got the idea. I've got a flashlight that uses the same type of battery cell, an 18650, that's used in the IKEA drill. But you can externally charge it, and you can swap them out. So it basically means you can use it with almost no downtime. Here I'm just marking out the polarity. Um, we want to make sure the current's flowing in the direction that the existing circuit board's expecting because some of the components might not like getting current in the wrong direction. Here, I'm just testing the voltage of the batteries. We're getting 3.7 volts out of each cell, um, which is uh, what's expected. Uh, and then in the drill, they were wired up in series. So then out of two 3.7 volt cells, we get 7.4 volts. And the idea is that we're gonna connect them the same way in that battery pack. So we need to jump the one end to get it in series again. So with that figured out, I started to prep everything to take the different uh, leads. I left out a few things when I 3D modeled this, so always take your time when you're designing your parts in CAD, and it'll save you time later. Uh, but it ended up working out anyways. Here I'm taking some springs off of one of the old motor brushes from the Black & Decker drill and cutting them down and then soldering them onto the ends of the leads that'll go to the board in the drill. I'm soldering the wire on the end so that hopefully the end of the wire is directly in contact with the battery rather than the end of the spring being in contact with the battery. Just because the spring is significantly thinner than the actual wire that I'm using, I figured this way it just reduces any chances of overheating or melting in there. On the other end, I'm creating that jump between the two cells Again, just with a piece of wire and soldering the ends of it to create a, a surface for the end of the battery to be in contact with. Then we can trim the leads, get the screws in so that that side is attached properly, and put the cells in and test for voltage. And you can't see it here because of the glare, but on the multimeter I am getting the 7.4 volts that are expected. With that done, we can begin modifying the uh, existing plastic shell of the drill so that we can mount that battery housing onto the exterior of it. I did want it to be removable by screws, so I decided to glue in some wooden blocking inside the plastic housing. I'm using a 5-minute epoxy to do this, and my recommendation if you're using anything that has to be mixed or 
like like a paint or an epoxy make sure that you mix it until you think it's mixed and then mix it uh, for at least twice as long as that ideally three times as long just so that you make sure it cures properly and you don't get frustrated by having epoxy that stays goopy for 10 days and never fully cures now I'm just getting it mounted where I want it it's temp temporarily with electrical tape and then drilling the holes so that I can get the screws in to mount it more permanently unfortunately I didn't have any Phillips screws of the right size so I did end up adding a second screw type to this drill uh, ideally if they had the same head as the existing screws um, that would have been great, but I didn't have any on hand. Now, for the most important part of all these, I'm uh, masking it off. Um, there's a rubberized grip, so I want to make sure I don't get any paint on that. Um, so that it stays grippy, and also because the spray paint will wear off of that grip when it flexes quite quickly. And then because we want two colors, I'll separate the two halves of the shell just by slicing down the seam, and I can repair any bits of the masking that came off. And then we can take them over, spray them, and they'll come back a different color. While they're drying, I sliced off the old leads of the battery, and stripped them, and tinned them so that I could solder them. And then likewise, uh, well first I cut some heat shrink, and then I tinned the leads coming off the battery so that they were ready for soldering. Always remember to get your heat shrink on beforehand, because it's really tough to get on after the fact. I was happy that I remembered to do it this time, because I often forget, and then it's frustrating because you have to resolder. And then you just hit it with a little bit of heat, and it shrinks up and insulates that joint really well. I used a propane torch there, but I, more ideally, you'd use a heat gun or a hair dryer. Uh, it's just less likely to burn the heat shrink. Everything's working, so we can keep going. Uh, we got the painted parts back and the grip is still nice and grippy and the paint isn't going to come off of it uh, prematurely now. You can fit everything back in. Um, I added a bit too much wooden blocking so I did end up having to modify that. I cut off the extra chunk that I added on the front there and I did have to also snip out some little bits of the plastic housing that got painted red there were a few features on the inside that needed to be removed with some side cutters. And then eventually it all fit together nicely. Just took a little bit of uh, fiddling around. Now we just make sure that the batteries go back in the correct orientation. So we get negative to the negative side and positive to the positive side. So that, again, the current's going in the correct direction for the tool and test that it works and it still is working just fine so I decided to uh, give it a little test I had a scrap piece of I think it was either white oak or ash which is a relatively hard wood um, and it still seems to be drilling fine so that's great One thing, it unfortunately won't fit in the case anymore, so we'll have to recycle that, and if I need a case for it, I'll figure out something else. The charger still seems to work. Um, I did have to remove one balancing cable, so for the time being, until I can test that it's working safely, I'm going to only use external chargers, um, but it's good to know that that still looks like it's working properly. And now that's all wrapped up, it's time to label it. Um, so this will be a great lightweight drill if I ever need to be um, putting in screws all day. It's a lot lighter than the bigger drills, so a lot nicer to use for long periods of time. Thank you very much for watching.